Well, hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to our Foundation for Conscious Living's Big Leap Home community. And um, these calls that you're on, this call, the Big Leap Bridge, is part of our Big Leap Home online programs. So these programs support individuals, organizations, and communities in generating agency, connection, and creativity on our shared planet. And I love that intention. And I know that tonight we're really diving into a beautiful topic where we can expand our capacity for connection um, through play and with, with a magnificent facilitator. I'm so excited to have Audrey here. So before I hand the call over, I want to just go over a, a few logistics. Um, one is that I want to invite you, if you're not already on our Big Leap Home Network, uh, we have this online gathering space for the Hendrix community, and you'll connect with the community, you'll hear about the latest events, and you'll also find Hendrix tools and practices that you can use in your daily life. So I'll put an invitation to that in the chat uh, when I'm finished. And uh, if you have questions during the call, Audrey's request is to put three question marks in front of the question so that we can see it easily. And we'll address those uh, at certain times during the call. It might be in the last 10 minutes. It might be during the call. Um, but please go ahead and get those questions down when they come up for you so that you can remain present with what's going on and current with what's going on. And it's not dragging you. So uh, lastly here, I want to invite you into a commitment. And when you listen to these words, I would love for you to notice how they land in your body. So we find that learning works best mm -hmm. when we choose to bring creativity, curiosity, openness to learning, and appreciation of ourselves and others into the space. Ah. So I am, uh, before I turn the call over to you, Audrey, I want to share an appreciation. And this is how we do this in the Big Leap Bridge world. And uh, tonight, what I want to appreciate you for is your, how do I want to put this? How much of your whole self goes into when you choose to do something like a class like this, where I just see how that lights you up and, and all the, I, there's resources that Audrey's going to be sharing. And I so appreciate that about you that it's, I can see so easily that that play is your genius and that um, sharing your wisdom is your genius. And so putting these two together, I feel like we're in for a magical evening. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I will turn the call over to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to just toss that right over to you and um yeah all right I'm trying to figure out how to view everyone so I'm not like completely distracted and uh yeah so do you uh, are you on gallery or speaker oh well, right now I'm on speaker I'm just going to leave it there I have a okay, kind of great. like squirrel yeah uh, yes yes <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, welcome, everyone. I feel really pleased to to be here. And thank you for the appreciation, Michelle. That's um, And if you've known me the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years, um, you might not have much of an idea that I am actually a, a recovering, exceptionally serious person. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I remember the first time someone said to me like, oh my God, you're really funny. And I'm like, really? <laughs> that never occurred to me. Uh, Cause it, it feels like um, for much of my life that I have sort of prided myself in being very responsible and very serious. And like somehow that had a much higher value uh, to it than having, to, than being in a state of play. Like to um, I, one, I will let everyone know that I feel very fortunate. My sister happens to be on the call tonight, so she will either be nodding or she'll be like, "What is she talking about?" Um, <laughs> but our our heritage is Dutch Puritan, so you can imagine how playful that is, <laughs> and Swedish. 
So, uh, and then a kind of a smattering of like other Northern European things, my 23 and me so that I'm like basically a Viking. So like Vikings were so playful, right? So, <laughs> so I, it has taken me a long time and still, you know, um, continues to be one of my learning edges is to bring a state of play to stuff. Because one of my very familiar, as I, as I choke, one of my very familiar go-tos is like the more focus and intensity and like seriousness I can bring, the harder I can work on something, like the more that's going to happen. So I'm going to actually switch the gallery because I want to see everybody. Okay. So anyone else? Yeah. Hello, Darlene. <laughs> anyone else feel like they had to grow up like super duper fast? Like I, yeah, like I have the sense of like when I was three, I was getting comments like, she's so mature. <laughs> she's so grown up. And, and I think that was probably true. I think there was probably a way that I felt like I needed to organize myself to, to be a big girl when I was not such a big girl. And for me, um, learning how to access a state of play, a state of mind of play, and also how to value that has been an, uh, is, and is still is an ongoing learning edge for me. So if you are also a recovering, very serious person, anyone? Yes. <laughs> if you're here on the call, you're probably like, yes. <laughs> Um, I want to introduce some new ideas, perhaps, that will make the experience of play and the state of play perhaps have a little bit more value, especially evolutionary value. Because um, if you're here, you're probably interested in your own transformation and evolution. And that working really hard on that and getting really serious about that is a great way to slow it down. And and being able to open up and generate and connect to a state of play is a great way to support the natural flow. Because believe it or not, depend, no matter how serious you think you are, that you, there is a primal urge to play. You have a primal urge to play. It is a natural state of being. Because they, all animals across the board, and they're looking at, they've done research all the way to a very primate animal called a sea squirt, which I just love the name of that, that even something as primal as a sea squirt plays. And the cool thing about humans is that we maintain a connection to that state of play longer than any other mammal on the planet. And that state of play is one of the great uses of that is that it keeps our brains really plastic and available for learning and available for change. So it's even though I might have thought that playing is a frivolous and and like low value activity, that you're accessing your state of play is actually one of the most evolutionary transformational things that you can choose. So one of the things I want to do, um, even before we get started too much, is let you know that I, I feel like I'm in the, in the realm of play, I'm kind of um, somewhere between kindergarten and first grade, maybe, you know, so I still feel like I'm in the early learning phase, so I'm going to be learning along with you. And one of the things that is super fun for me and play and feels like a state of play for me is learning. I love to learn. And one, so as Michelle was saying, like when I start to look into something, I dive in because I'm kind of like, <laughs> I want to, you know, get everything I can get from something. So I want to just give you a couple of resources that I think Michelle have, has already listed in the chat, but I want to show you what they look like. Um, that are some of the resources that I'm using to remind myself of the value of play, the evolutionary value of play. So one of them is one of my absolute favorite books is called um, Play. <laughs> no surprise what they're talking about here. And it's by a, a guy, a, a doctor named Stuart Brown. 
And the subtitle is How It Shapes the Brain, Opens the Imagination, and Invigorates the Soul. So, and so if you want to dive deeper into the subject of play, I highly, highly recommend this one. Um, the other one is a slightly older book by uh, o, o, o period, he doesn't list his first name, Fred Donaldson, who's a PhD psychologist um, called Playing by Nature. And Playing by Nature. And what I love, I actually like the subtitle even better, The Vision and Practice of Belonging. And one of the things that he dives into a lot here is um, kind of the early developmental impact of play and play across the animal kingdom. So it's kind of, a, it's, I, it's, both of them are really good. I was telling Michelle earlier that this book, if you've ever like held an old book, like this is 1994 copyright, it feels like a book, you know, it's like got like heavy pages. It's so great. Okay, so, and the other one is a movie um, that you can go on, it's actually episodic, um, on PBS called The Promise of Play. So all of those things I want to highly recommend in case you're interested in learning more, especially after we mess around a little bit tonight. And to let you know that I am, I'm, I'm in my early, you know, early bell curve um, portion of my, like, openness to playing openness to playing with life to my the experiences of life and some of you yeah I'll give you some ideas of um, how I do that also um, so I want to give you first of all a little bit of what I like to call left brain candy so information around the subject of play that will hopefully feed your sense of understanding of knowledge of wisdom of play and also maybe be a little bit of a, a nudge that lets you know the actual evolutionary value of play so and before we do that I want to have you just take a moment and sit back and give yourself a little bit of a some kind of movement that feels easy and friendly to you so that you can feel you have access to your feeling experience and Take a breath or two. My shorthand version is feel your body, find your breath. So let that happen so that you come home to yourself for a moment. And I want to have you ask yourself, would you be willing to have a really good time this evening learning what you most need and want to learn about play? <laughs> we have a few little jazz hands. I like it. <laughs> And would you be willing to have whatever you learn kind of level you up in your engagement of play, no matter what's happening in your life? Yay. It feels like there's one more question, so I got to just kind of check and see. Okay, so as I'm listening, so I want to have you, would you be willing to reconnect with or unkink the hose to your natural impulse to play? Everyone got a thumbs up on at least one of those things for everybody? <laughs> okay, great. All right, so one of the things I want to have you do, um, just as we get started here, and then I'm going to give you some left brain candy also, is like, I want to have you think of like when, when you were younger and play seemed to be kind of more permissible, what were the things that you did? What were the, and you know, what were the things that when you participated with them gave you a sense of lightness, a sense of enjoyment, maybe a sense of time disappearing, um, a really a sense like, um, you could have done it all day, all night, and never really gotten tired. And I want you to go ahead and start to list those in chat. Because some people are going to list some stuff that other people are like, oh, yeah, I did that. So we can actually kind of come together in our experiences of play. Since this is a, both a community call, but, you know, play itself is a 
unifying experience. Let's see, we've got swinging. I love swinging. It's my favorite playground equipment, nature, castles, teacher, dress up, painting, jump rope, yes. Anyone play chase? We played a, we played a game called Bloody Murder, which sounds awful. <laughs> but what it was was sort of like a uh, higher level hide and seek sort of. <sighs> peekaboo, anyone play peekaboo? Remember playing peekaboo or play peekaboo with kids? That's another one. Believe it or not, reading, if you love to read, that's another one. Playing make-believe, storytelling. I love movies. Movies is another one for me. I'm playing with animals. Um, I was also uh, an athlete or still am an athlete and a dancer. Dance dancing is one of the things that I've recently returned to. Hanging with your kitties. Yes, great. Building forts. I love that. And dancing. All right. Bicycles, activity, all of those things. Chess, checkers. Some of you may have played games. I was kind of game challenged. You know, I think I remember playing like, uh, you know, Monopoly. That was like my, my one board game, maybe. Music would be another one. Playing music, dancing, toys, things that you can play with with your hands. Did you have toys or Legos or dolls or things? Now, and all of these things, I think there's a, a kind of assumption that, you know, when you grow up, you should grow out of these desires to play or these activities of play. But all of these things that it looks like you're doing, which of course you are, they are accessing and using this natural urge that we all have lifelong to play. And well, why, why would we play? Like, especially from an evolutionary standpoint, it's like, why play? Because it seems like it would be much more productive to be like doing stuff that's like, you know, productive. But with play, one of the things um, is that play involves the highest level of your autonomic nervous system. So the most evolved level of your autonomic nervous system, where you create, where you innovate. All of that in, is engaged when you are oh so, when you are in a state of play, and play can be looked at as an activity, which of, of course it is, but it's also a state of mind, and it's a state of mind that you can bring to almost everything. The other, um, you know, the power of play is manyfold. One is that it's just generally pleasurable. You know, it feels good. And I think a lot of us forgot, I know I did, that um, feeling good is actually a good thing. You know, I know as an, as, a, as an athlete that like no pain, no gain thing was just sort of drilled in. And if I was having a good time, I wasn't working hard enough. I can even remember saying this to my, when I was teaching cycling, I would say, if you can think about anything else but what you're doing, you're not working hard enough. Yeah, so, so like the, the kind of like allowing yourself to feel the felt experience of pleasure. Play itself is also energizing or the word that I've been loving recently is generative. So it, it generates and liberates energy. And if one of the things that you want in your life is to feel more vitality, more energy, I want to invite you to look at where you may have put the lid on your desire and urge to play and start to loosen, loosen that up, start to liber you know, lift that off. Play itself is also renewing. So it, it, it refreshes you. And part of the reason that play refreshes you is that it, when you're in a state of play, you're, you're being creative. You're like, you're curating, you're bringing things in from different, different areas. You might be changing the rules of the game as you go. You, that, you know, when something doesn't work, you try something else. So it's ongoingly renewing. And then what I was just saying is that it's really innovative. 
So if there's one thing that I would say is needed, I'm going to use that word specifically, in our overall collective right now is new ideas. You know, like not just it may include revising and refreshing old ideas, but really new, creative, innovative ideas. And we can't get to those by working really hard. We actually, from a place of in your nervous system, we only get to those by generating a sense of play, a state of mind of play. And while it looks frivolous, actually choosing to play makes you smarter. It also probably makes you younger, at least more vital. It makes you feel younger, at least. I was looking in one of these books and one of the phrases that I love, and some of you know that I love quotes, is that play is the fertilizer for growth. I think that's such a cool thing. And that sustainable change, if that's what we want moving forward in our lives and on the planet here, Sustainable change requires play. So, you know, amongst the left brain candy, I've got my like pages of things that I'm sure I'm not going to get to, but I want to have you like, like, how do you know when you're playing? Like, what is play? Um, one of the things that I love about Stuart Brown in this book is he's like, I really hesitate to define it because it's really such a personal experience. It's really a, uh, a felt experience that you know when you're playing. But one of the things that he does do that I really love is he gives us, and he, you know, like what I was reading is that he, he gives a couple of qualities that let you know when you're playing. One is that play the, the sense of play appears to be non-productive, appears. That's the key word there. Meaning that, you know, it's, it's invigorating. It, you're not doing it to like win something. You're not doing it to get somewhere. You're not doing it for a reward or for an outcome. It's really its own reward. Play is its own reward. It has a sense of, um, you know, creativity. So you're always asking like, what else? What else is possible? What else is possible? Play itself is voluntary. Like you want to do it. No one has to coerce you into it. And once you're, once you've made that choice, it is um, self uh, renewing. So you want to continue doing it. Often in a state of play, and you may remember this as, especially as a kid, that when you're really playing at something, time just disappears. Do you remember like being outside playing after school and then all of a sudden it was dark? And you're like, you know, or you're getting called in for dinner or, you know, you got to go in and take a bath or something. But it's just like time disappears. It's, it's the kind of malleable you know, you really start to recognize the illusion of clock time when you're playing. The other thing that starts to disappear or at least lessen is a sense of what they call self-consciousness, which doesn't mean like I'm conscious of myself, but it means like your attachment to approval, disapproval, like you're doing it and you would do it whether or not someone likes that you're doing it or doesn't like that you're doing it, but you generally feel a, a sense of ease in your own experience and your sense of worry goes down. Your concern about what people think decreases as your sense of play increases. Um, play is just organically improvisational. I'm just seeing, I know that, um, that Jody is here and Jody is like a genius in improv comedy. And that it's, <laughs> yay. And that it's like, you, you can't do it wrong. You're like, yes, this is what's happening. And what else wants to happen? Yes, this is what, so like an improvisational comedy that I, I'm not an expert, but Joe, it's like the yes and, yes and. And there's this ongoing you know, improvisation of what feels fun, what feels good, which is of course, one of the things that, that is true about play is that it feels good. So you wanna keep it going. 
especially as a kid. As an adult, we have that like, that's enough. Time to get back to work. But if you really let yourself do it, it has this kind of ongoing, you know, instant gratification feeling. And that it, it really, the thing that I want to kind of underline with all of these things is that the choice to play is in there. The choice to play is an organic, natural experience. It's an organic, natural urge that despite how serious you may have thought you got in your life, it is still there. One of the phrases that I like to use is that um, nothing real can ever be lost, nor can it be taken from you. And play, your urge to play, is a natural, organic, primal urge that all of us as animals, as human animals, have. Some of us may have gotten a little disconnected. Some of the hoses might have got a little bit kinked up. But that urge to play never went anywhere. So the choice to play now, even as adults, not even as adults, especially as adults, is a way of returning us to our true nature, to that genuine sense of ourselves, and to that genuine deep sense of well-being. <laughs> I love actually seeing everyone in, in a gallery because now I'm like, um, Rebecca's got a cat, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Animals know how to do this. We don't have to teach them or reteach them. The uh, humans are a little bit different. So I want to just pause for a moment and see if anyone has anything they'd like to say about all that. It could be a question, could be a comment. Feel free to just unmute yourself and and speak. I love the returning to our true nature. Like my whole body just goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And FYI, in my second language of acronyms, in my inspired leadership stuff, there's plan versus play. So mm -hmm. plan is performance for lists to achieve numbers. Mm. Right? Play is potential. Lighting up authentic yeses. <laughs> I love it. I especially love watching you and tuning into you, Marion, when you're speaking about it, because I can <laughs> feel how that lights you up. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Yeah. Anyone else have something they'd like to add? Rebecca, feel free to just go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to share one of the funnest adult parties I have ever been to and it was very serious people in their 30s 40s and 50s a very fancy dressed up party and I was instructed by somebody to go in at 10 uh, lots of drinking lots of food lots of blah blah <laughs> and at 10 o'clock at night when it was dark we came in with big trays full of filled squirt guns and we ah. them out and everybody uh, went wild. I mean, all the Russian accents came out. People were crawling behind chairs and rolling on the floor and everybody just went bananas. It was the best thing ever. So <laughs> I love that. My favorite, favorite fun adult party. Yeah. That's, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just like, where could I do that? Where could I do that? <laughs> well, a moment ago, uh, I, I, um, you know how I love my part of how my improv shows up is with wordplay and what what just came through my head was complacency versus come plays and see <laughs> <laughs> come play let's see yeah. <laughs> as a way to shift I love humor shifts and so if I ever notice I'm in complacency that would be a humorous shift for me to yeah to think about what and what I love about what, you know, what you're saying too, Jody, is that they, one of the things that I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not super big on typing. I mean, there's all sorts of personality typing and like blah, blah, you know, all the typing, but one, one of the things that um, 
that I, you know, have was kind of reading into and and learning about was like the different qualities of play and the kind of play signatures. So um, most of you, many of you are familiar with your fear signatures, like how you organize yourself when you get scared. And so just for the sake of shits and giggles, um, I want you to like imagine an experience recently where you got scared and go ahead and let your body do scared, whatever that looks like to you. And let your whole body do it. And then maybe exaggerate it just a little bit more. And then right in this moment, I want you to remind yourself how you love to play as a kid. And I want you to start to like, if, like if I'm thinking of you, Jody, if you, you know, like word play with something like, you know, start like what, what are the words that could describe this? Or if you were a mover, like me, like what are the movements that could start to open up and melt this? If you were a musician, how could you like go from your scared place to like playing your instrument? If you were an artist, how could you take what you're doing and begin to sculpt or paint it in the space in front of you? So that we're bringing our choice to play to something, to, to something like even something that might look as serious as getting scared. And I want you to notice when you start to bring that state of play, I just got really sweaty. When you start to bring that state of play to scared, how that changes things. So some of the play signatures that you, you may or may not recognize, and you're maybe one of these, you may be many of these, I think I'm many of these, is that like the joker or the fool, the one that likes to crack jokes, the one that's like, you're the funny one, you're the class clown, you know, you know that would not be me, I don't think, although maybe, maybe more in the last five years than ever before. Um, another one would be the, what they call the kinesthete, like the mover. Any of you are movers, dancers like me, that like in order to think well or order to learn, you got to be moving, you know, and this could be moving physically, it could be moving things emotionally, it could also be like the like really letting your mental capacities move and um, another one is the explorer. So who out there loved making forts, loved going on adventures, loved like um, I, I know I ran, tried to run away at least a couple of times thinking I was going to go around the block and find something new on the other side of the block or climbing trees and seeing what the perspective was from a tree. I, I, uh, I actually, you know, my, ex my inner explorer created a couple of not so pleasant experiences for myself, but, but that kind of explorer nature, that enjoyment of the challenge, the enjoyment of the unknown. And this one might be, this one kind of surprised me, which is like the competitor. So some people really get a lot of juicy energy from, um, from, you know, from competing, from the challenge of having someone else, you know, participate with them or a team participate with them. And that competitive nature is rather than a one up, one down, good, bad, like fight experience. It really is an aliveness experience. Another one would be the director. So who out there loves like planning logistics for trips, like loves to get in there and like, we're going to go here and then we're going to go there and that's going to be so fun. And then we're going to, yeah, you know, so that kind of director, like the feeling of organizing and directing your adventure. And another one would be like the artist or the, or the creator. So the play that comes from like, maybe you were a painter or a sculptor, or, you know, you love to draw, or you loved using crayons, you know, that, that artist creator, and you could just lose yourself in a coloring book. That would be one of those states of play. And the one, the other one I love, and I actually, I love doing this is the storyteller. So all of us as humans love, love, love telling, telling stories. 
typically speaking, we tell them against ourselves. <laughs> we, we tell stories that are like judgments against ourselves or someone else. But one of the things I love is that like it, the phrase that I use is, if you're going to make up a story, for those of you that love telling stories, at least make one up in your favor or at least make one up that feels good. Because they're, they're both stories. You may as well make one up that where you can just lose yourself in that story, that fantasy. And um, one of the things that I love to do, I have a storyteller in me, I think we all do, is to get super like over the top outrageous about it. And I will actually do this like when I'm out to dinner <laughs> with people. I'm, I imagine there might be people at, at, in this call that have been there with me where you like start to tell stories about different tables and about who they are or what they're up to, or like that person is really a Russian spy and they've just been in the country for only, you know, they've just, their sleeper cell has just gotten activated, but they're actually activated in service of like, you know, something, something positive. So like be that storyteller where that generates a sense of aliveness and the act of telling stories or writing stories really is kind of that self-renewing. And each of us has all of these. Did, so did everyone recognize at least one of these that felt like it, it, it fit you? Yeah? And they're probably much more and they're probably lots of different combinations of these things. But when you recognize that, that play signature and like what it is that really brings you alive, that gives you that sense of timelessness, that gives you that kind of lowering your self-consciousness where you're actually able to kind of show up more as yourself, that you can bring your play signature to things that you really thought were impossible to play with, that you were for sure were really, really, really serious. So let's, let's, let's test the theory. So the, I want to have, make sure that everyone has at least one potential play signature or at least one potential vision in their mind of what they did as a kid when they were playing. Is there anyone that, that doesn't have one of those? <laughs> anyone that needs to borrow one from someone else? All right. Cool, because I want to have you experiment with this. So, and I want most of you will probably know that one of my absolute favorite ways to play is to wonder. So wonder to me is even better than getting curious. It's like a much larger space. So I'm going to add some wonder to this and see if it works. We're just going to experiment together. This is part of my explorer. Like I have no idea what's going to happen. We're going to just see. So I want to have you Bring into your awareness right now something that you tend to get really, really serious about. There are plenty of things out there in the world to get really serious about right now. And one of the things I remind myself of, and I did not say this, but I, I remind myself of, is like, um, I can never feel bad enough to make someone else who feels bad feel better. The only way that I have impact, especially with something that may be happening across the world, or the maybe like the easiest way that I can have impact, no, it's not the only way, but one of the ways that I can have impact is to change my state. You know, if I'm walking around as the ex, as a living embodiment of playfulness and wonder, that's going to have that's going to make a difference rather than walking around as like the world sucks and everyone's going to whatever. So so I want to have you like find that thing that you feel is serious and go ahead and notice how you organize yourself around whatever that subject is. Like, how do you get kind of heavy and serious about it? Um, and there are lots of different ways you could do this. You could go up in your head, try and figure out a solution. You could like go super spacey and be like, you know, like kind of, you know, what, what's, uh, yeah, I call it going stupid. Um, you, you could 
like try and figure out who it is that you need to fight to make it better. So let your body take on you. I'm just thinking like you could go crawl into a corner and rock, <laughs> which I've kind of felt like doing in Ikea at least a couple of times. So find that thing that like you really think is serious. And like, this is, and you might even say to yourself, this is really, really serious. This is serious. And let your body, and just notice what happens in your system when you do serious. One thing to notice is how much are you moving? How... <laughs> I know Elizabeth is yawning, like, oh, it's so hard. <laughs> and typically you're also not going to be breathing. So when you're serious, you're usually scared also. So what I want you to do from this place is like, you can even just say to yourself, this is really serious. This is not funny. This is really, really not funny. But I want you to start to play with your voice. This is really serious. This is not funny. And you probably said that to people where they're like, this is not funny. Stop laughing at, stop laughing. This is not funny. This is really serious. But see how you can add, like, would you be willing that you don't have to know how yet, but would you be willing to open up the possibility of play within this thing that you are experiencing is super duper serious. Like, hmm, here comes the wonder, like, hmm, hmm, I wonder how I could bring a felt sense of play to this thing that I'm convinced is super serious. Hmm. Hmm. And just allow yourself to wonder about that. So remember, you have an, a true nature of play. Your being wants to play. So just asking the question, like, hmm, I wonder if there's any way that I could play with this. I wonder if I would be willing to generate a sense of play with this. And just notice what happens simply by asking the question. Great, I'm, notice I'm noticing a lot. Are you guys noticing yourselves? Did, you, did everyone notice that they all, everyone started to move? The ones, people that I can see <laughs> started to move more? Like, hmm, is there any way that I could play with this? I wonder how I could play with this. And even if you don't come up with an answer, the question already begins to infuse or, or shift your nervous system to a state of play. So that's one thing. So, and just notice in your body. So remember, play is an, is an activity, of course. But the thing that we're, I'm really interested in is the felt experience of play, the feeling of lightness, the feeling of flow, the feeling like, oh, maybe something new could happen, the feeling of possibility. And your own body probably can give you some signs and symptoms, some sensations of when you start to play. So, oh, I love that, Tricia. Thank you. You just answered the question that I hadn't asked yet. So I want to have you notice, like, when, when you start to feel yourself get willing to play or even start to engage from a place of play in your mind, what do you notice in your body? Not so heavy. Yep. More breath. Absolutely. Hmm. Wonder if there's any way I could play with this. More flexible, yep. Yeah, Daph, now that kind of whoa. a little release of tension. 
Less locked in. Yep. And since when you get serious, my guess is, is you have already in your lifetime exhausted all of your strategies. You've tried everything. Yes, you get to create. Exactly. So when you start to open up the possibility of play, like, oh, what's the possibility of play here? You open up the possibility of creativity of innovation, of meeting an issue with something new. Because otherwise, as you, when you stay serious about it, when you stay heavy in it and locked in, that, you know, that what you will do is continue to repeat all of those strategies that you've already tried to do to resolve that issue. And you'll try harder and you'll try harder, but you're still doing the same thing over and over and over and over again until you get more and more and more and more serious about the thing. And then it looks like it's never going to change. But play starts, and I, for me, it's definitely wonder is going to be my, almost my first go-to. Wonder and movement are going to be my first ones. Is It gives you that, hmm, is there any possibility of play here? Am I willing to open up the possibility of play here? Even if you don't know how, asking the question will begin to invite opportunities and possibilities and also will turn the volume up. This is my volume knob for everyone that doesn't have a remote. <laughs> well, like turn the volume up on your natural, your innate nature of play. The one in you who wants to play. <laughs> I love that, Michelle, that the one of you that wants to play has a lot more answers in you than the one who really is trying to figure it out. And it has a lot more new possibilities that you probably haven't attempted yet. And when you open yourself up to the possibilities, the one that really will work for you will come to you. So did any, was anyone able to maintain their sense of like, this is really, really, really serious? I know. Yay, it worked. <laughs> anyone have an experience they want to share? Hi. I noticed that uh, back when you introduced the idea of getting into the fear signature and then bringing the play in, that worked really fast for me. It was really fun. I just felt a whole shift in my body. And uh, I'm really appreciating that one. That one feels easy. Feels like, oh, that's yes. a that's, Yeah, that one, yeah. I can do that one. Yes. And that's, to me, that's the key. Like you want to find the easiest the easiest door, the easiest window, the easiest access to your sense of play. Because remember, play is the bridge to your well-being. And play is the bridge to a, a greater sense of creativity and possibility. And play is actually imperative for us to make changes within ourselves and within the environment around us. And I'm, you know, it sounds like a good idea, but there's actual neuroscience and that is proving this, like you don't actually have sustainable learning and growth unless you're having a good time. For me, I was just talking to my housemate this morning. I was so lucky as an early elementary, uh, in early elementary to have teachers that allowed me to get up and move. If I don't move, I can't, I can't form. I mean, I'm up on my feet right now. If I'm not, if I'm sitting down, I'm usually bouncing didn't want to make anyone nauseous. So I'm not bouncing, but it's like, you know, the movement of that. So like when you find your play signature, when you find that thing that is self-renewing, that is um, that you do it for its own sake, because it feels good. 
if you can do that, even while you're bringing, you know, into your attention, something that you feel like is serious or someplace that you've gotten stuck, then you've immediately um, added some possibilities. Like, is there, you know, how is it that I could, you know, what's the possibility of play here? And I love the idea of going back to the ones that you knew when you were a kid. If you're, if you are an avid storyteller, then tell stories about it, but tell stories that make you smile. You know, if you were an artist or a sculptor, then bring the expression of that thing that's really serious into some kind of art piece. You add play to it. You get lost in the play of it. If you're a mover for me, you know, as a dancer, like I'll bring that into a, a dance, like a really, really, really serious dance <laughs> or something. And, and as soon as I add my play signature, my capacity to play to something I thought was really serious, it instantly changes. It's like a catalyst. Um, it instantly changes the chemistry of it. And I start to open to greater possibility. And when I'm, and that invigorates my imagination, which then drives my sense of growth and transformation and lets me have a really good time on the planet. Oh, I love that, Darlene. So this is great. So Darlene, I'm going to use yours too. It's like, when you're really, really, really serious about something, when you can feel it, um, one of the things I want is like make a list for yourself. So, because when you're really, really, really serious, it's going to be hard to come up with it. <laughs> so that you have it right there on your refrigerator, like, oh, right, I could do that. Oh, right, I could wonder. But you could also sing. So sing the thing that you think is really, really, really serious. If because changing your perspective and your relationship to something changes everything. Even the stuff that's happening in the world that is really hard and challenging, if you can bring your, your state of play to it, it's going to give you potentially some new ideas about what you, you know, what's yours to do to create something new in the larger universe, but it definitely helps you create something new within your own experience of it. I'm going to take a deep, I am taking a nice deep breath. One of the places I want to invite you to, um, to mess around with this, like to do your own little laboratory experiment is with your feelings. So many of us, most of us got lot, had lots of stories about like anger is really serious or, I mean, I think we have all lady, all women here. So it's like, you know, that it's not okay, you know? So um, being able to like, oh, how could I play with my anger? How could I play with sadness? Is there a way to play and participate with grief? So you can bring that sense of play to the things that like you may have been trained are not very playful, like feelings, big feelings. And that it doesn't have to be funny. You don't have to go all the way to funny, but your willingness to bring your quality of play. And according to um, Power Versus Force, I don't know if any of you have read that book, but the state of play, the state of joy, the frequency of joy, if you want to, you know, if you want a little bit of um, support in generating even more of this for yourself, that when you're in that state of play, that you offset a, like I think he names like 750,000 people who are in the state of like serious. So if you want to make a real impact in the world and you want to be part of the, the wave of, you know, possibility, the wave of new, new choices, then one of the places I encourage you to give a lot of attention 
is in turning the volume up on your capacity to play. Cool. Well, this doing facilitating these are things for me that is a huge amount of play because I just looked at the time. I was like, oh, <laughs> we're almost done. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> so I want to just use these last few minutes to take any questions that you might have um, of me or of the subject matter. And I'll do my best to respond accurately. Yes, Rebecca. Hi, yeah, I live in the East Coast. I'm just loving this. And I know that for months now I've been saying, I want to get a PhD in play. But you know, right, right? Like, uh, who is doing this? I'm going to look up your resources. Oh my gosh. You're doing it. You're in California. I'm here in gray old Philadelphia. Do you know of anything going on in the East Coast? I'm sure of it. I would go look at Omega Institute and so, but if you, especially this book, Rebecca. Yeah. The yeah. bibliography is just like pages and pages, you know, like the, he's, there's so many um, resources listed okay. in this. All right. Fantastic. And some of them are around animal play, some of them are around human play, some around early developmental play, the impact of play on early development and, you know, play in the womb and play, you know, wow. yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, if you yeah. dive in, you're never going to be bored ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Who, who's the author? This is Stuart Brown. Uh, I put a, a the name of a wonderful book in the chat. Um, uh, Tinker Dabble Doodle Try. He's a neuroscientist, and mm. it's about play and creativity, and it's fascinating and generative. <laughs> yeah, generative. I love that word. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm sure I do not have the library on play. There's plenty, plenty more. I just found the ones that speak to me. Any other questions, comments, experiences that you want to share? I, I'll share if that's okay. Yeah, go for it, yeah. darling. Yeah, I was, I dealt with a really upsetting, serious issue today. So this was really good. Um, and it was, I could notice a part of me was like ugh, resisting even, you know, the concept. And it really, I really felt sad and alone in the serious part. And like, I could feel the resistance of, I don't like this is happening, you know, the lack of facing. And then when I added play really was like, I got in the river of flow and resistance was gone. And mm. you know, I don't have to figure this out all by myself. I didn't feel all alone anymore. I felt so alone in the seriousness and I did not feel alone yeah. when I shifted to the play. That's so cool. The cool thing, one of the best things is that like play is actually the thing that opens us up to community. Play is the thing that creates a sense of belonging. So you just are an ex amazing example of that. Even by myself. <laughs> Even all by yourself. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> Yay, Darlene. <laughs> Yay. I, can I share something that happened to me? Sure. Um, it's, uh, it's just years ago when I was going through this horrible divorce and I was so utterly lonely and in the middle of the night and I had a, an old friend who's a psychiatrist and I was like three in the morning or something I thought, or two and I, he was in on the West coast. So I called him and I was like, I felt like I was in this desperation and he just, he joked with me and it was like popping out of this horrible universe into lightness and um and I don't know what it was so sudden and so quick that I I, I will always remember that um how how quickly things can change from from desperate to um okay you know 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I want, I'll just riff on that and then we're going to be complete here. Is I, I remember um, it was after I moved out to California, I lived, I grew up in Michigan, that I was literally on my knees just like, and the word desperate, and I had avoided desperation my entire life. To, you know, like it was the last thing I ever wanted to feel. And and I, I had this like, okay, so this is what's happening. How can I play with this? How can I bring this into a state of play? And one of the things that I love, I, especially at the time I love to do is write poetry. And I wrote a piece from that place of desperation and it immediately changed the experience. Hmm. And it wasn't like I didn't feel desperate. I still felt desperate, but I felt something else in addition to desperate that allowed me to be with desperate in a way that didn't feel so desperate, if that ah, makes sense. Yes. So it's that finding that thing that, you know, and it's usually going to be something you probably did as a kid, you know, because you, that urge was not yet squashed at that time or not as squashed anyway. And so to be able to bring something of that to whatever's happening now, it, it, it's, I was, I just had the thought it's regenerative. It's very self-loving. Yes. I too am in like this, oh, it's a serious situation, blah, blah, blah today. And uh, yeah, through this whole, like, like, ooh, I just put in like, hmm, how can I play with this? Like not, not victim myself, you know? Yeah. Totally. And, yeah. And that, I mean, that's a, per, I'm, a perfect thing I'm, we're going to kind of complete with is yeah. that when you ask, when you ask a question, you immediately put yourself in the driver's seat. It's not, that's not true. When you ask a good question, you immediately put yourself in the driver's seat. If you ask why, not so, such a good question. But if you ask, how can I play with this? Is there any way I could play with this? Would I be willing to play with this? You immediately change your relationship with what, whatever it is. And even if you don't have an answer, you have changed your relationship with it. And it will change. And you may have to ask the question a dozen times or more. Because we have a kind of delight with being serious <laughs> around things. But I want to encourage you to, if you leave this call with nothing else, just that question like, hmm, is there any way I could play with this? And it, it also feels, works it with things like that are- It feels like joy, choice, Teflon. Yeah. And it also works with things that are playful, already playful. You can still amplify the play. Anyway, I can be more playful with this. I can have more fun with this. So you don't have to wait till you're like in the dark and the serious stuff to play with this like is there any way i can play with this could be with a sensation in your body could be with a thought so but that question will immediately change the quality of relationship you have with whatever it is that you're you're pointing it at and more possibilities will arise and if they don't you can email me and tell me i'm wrong <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much. I feel like I like got the tip of the information that I would love to share with you, but I trust that it's all perfectly orchestrated and I had a lot of fun. So thanks for being in the playground with me. Of course. And if you have, if you'd like to connect with me more directly, I think M Michelle just put my contact information in there. Um, mm -hmm. I am teaching a coach or I'm doing a coaching group coaching stuff coming up and starting in October. If you're interested in joining one of my coaching groups, um, let me know. And thank you very much for your attention and your participation. Yay. Thank you. Thank Yay. you, Audrey. Thank you so much. That was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank That's you. how Thanks, I experienced Michelle. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks too. everyone for being here. It really lightened me up. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> Bye everybody. Thank you.